गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू द नॉलेज सेशन फीट सीए विनीत पटवारी आई एम लक्ष्य छाबड़ा को फाउंडर ऑफ स्टार्टअप प्रन्योर सो लेट्स नो अबाउट विनीत सो विनीत इज अ क्वालिफाइड चार्टर्ड अकाउंटेंट एंड होल्ड्स एन एमबीए डिग्री फ्रॉम आईएएम इंदौर ही इज द सीईओ एंड को फाउंडर ऑफ स्टॉक स्टॉक एज एंड ई लर्न मार्केट्स एंड आल्सो द को फाउंडर ऑफ क्रेडिट एकेडमी it has uh, in the past he has been a research analyst and has also worked with hsbc bank as an intern he is currently based out of kolkata welcome vineet thank you so much for joining us for this session i also welcome all the participants who took out time on a sunday morning and are here to learn from vineet's experiences so let's let's you know begin our conversation with vineet and hear it from him so yeah vineet welcome once again uh, we so happy to have you today uh please please share something about uh, you know yourself briefly about your ca journey and you know your journey so far lakshya thank you so much for having me here i'm uh, you know very pleasantly surprised to see that things happen on sunday right and with young folks like you all uh, you are giving two hours of your sunday one hour of your sunday that's a big thing so let me congratulate you for that and uh, yeah let's let's uh, Uh, dive into the topic of the day and i'll briefly introduce myself uh, so you know i'll i'll start with my academic journey i am from calcutta born and brought up in calcutta and uh, did my graduation in commerce from st xavier's kolkata and i was also pursuing chartered accountancy at that point of time uh, and cat happened in between so at that point of time ca was around five and half years course so during my article ship i was you know uh, i got lucky to got good percentile in cat and uh, went to do an mba for in i am indore so obviously that uh, you know it was towards the end of my article ship the good thing was that so when i came back from my you know mba uh, so i was the only one who started a venture after my college in the year 2008 because at that point of time entrepreneurship was not what it is today and um, lehman brothers just happened at that point of time so people were like jo job mil rahi hai le lo bhai theek hai i also had a job from jp morgan all right uh, so somehow i thought at that point of time that this is the least risk period if i have to do something of my own right and the entrepreneurship bug actually uh, that, that happened in the year 2007 8 when i was uh, doing my mba uh, so that when i came back i was actually doing a venture of my own into cat preparation right um, which was called fire up so cat was going online in the year 2009 8 9 at that point of time so i thought it's a good time to start something because people will start learning online right. so probably it was too early for its time because uh, you know when an exam goes online the preparation goes online maybe after 10 years like what happened now the edtech is a charm now all the preparations are happening uh, especially post covid period covid was a catalyst in in that field so we have such uh, unicorn edtech platforms coming up now but that was at that point of time a little too early to do that so i realized after working on it for almost uh, one and a half years that uh, monetization will become a little problematic uh so you know i i went for a corporate job for almost a year or so i'll tell you the story of uh, you know what happened after that but before that how ca final happened okay so i got married in the year 2009 after my uh, mba so my wife was hard bent that i should complete my ca because you know she had immense respect for chartered accountants uh, and and that's what normally happens in our society right so i thought Uh, okay i'll i'll give the ca final exam uh, and uh, that was the time when uh, i decided no tuitions nothing because you don't have time for tuitions when you are doing a venture or something like that so luckily ca final i cleared in one shot and uh, i become a ca so but yeah uh, ca practice audit taxation accounts etc i was a little away from that as an entrepreneur obviously all these things are part of your life uh but directly dealing into that i was a little away but i realized one thing the ca qualification gave me lot of strength lot of strength which actually um, you know can be very useful for any entrepreneur okay. so that's that's about my early uh, career 
and then from there uh, you know after a year or so working with crisil which is a rating agency right mm-hmm. india's top yeah. rating agency crisil i worked with them for almost a year and then what happened was uh, vivek bajaj who is my um, partner in this venture co-founder so he was doing something in financial market because he had a family business background of financial markets he was running a prop trading desk so he th- he said that i want to do something in financial market in education you have a edtech experience let's mm-hmm. join hands and let's create something which through which we can reach out to a large audience to make people teach financial markets okay so financial markets was close to my heart because i was a ca bcom etc my entire qualification was that but learning financial markets was very difficult because there was no structured training as such and whatever training was available was extremely expensive right so we thought it's a good idea and we started working on that and then uh, the rest happened we started elon markets in the year around 2013 uh, and then after working on it for a couple of years we realized that people don't have the right tool so we started stockage and so on and so forth so you know uh, i'll answer your questions so this one is the first question i'll ask let you ask questions because otherwise the story will go on for some time <laughs> i think a couple of my questions got answered uh, in your brief introduction itself so you know two three things here that one thing i could uh, gather from this uh, answer of yours was that you have been a visionary since the beginning so for example uh, learning online uh, became a cool thing very later in life but you had you know envisioned it way too early which was uh, you know awesome and one tip for all the participants here that marriage can also give you a push to become a ca so if someone is stuck somewhere get married and uh, your your better half might uh, you know give you a push to complete your ca so that's awesome that's it can so go awesome. the other way also by the way <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure uh, right So you know, uh, one question that we have is because you have you know done an MBA and that too from IIM. So how important is doing an MBA for CS today in today's scenario? What would you say? I would say you know uh, the question how important it is. Uh, I think if you if you are clear what you want to do, right in life, educational qualification, whatever qualification you have, will be helpful. uh i personally believe that if a chartered accountant you know a little bit a general perception is a chartered accountant given the curriculum being very very academic and technical right there is a too little emphasis on softer skills which is a big part in a mba curriculum right so that if someone can manage from wherever whether it's an mba degree or it's on their own right uh even gmcs is doing good work in that right uh, you need not do a separate degree for that only but yeah if you want to get into management if you want to get into management consulting strategy etc mba degree is far more useful right because you need to have a larger uh, understanding of a business as a whole right but i personally believe a chartered accountant has a depth of understanding on many subjects right mm. if they can work on their softer skills they can be as good as any mba or whatever from wherever you are yeah so you know guys uh, once again this is a take away and this we have heard from a lot of people you know even during our uh, orientation which uh, see uh, which icai conducts and gmcs and all we have heard that uh, uh, the importance of having soft skills and you know uh, better communication skills uh, are way too important so of course of course our knowledge of the subject say audit taxation accounting everything will help us uh, you know uh, take the first step towards our career but wherever we need to go towards uh, you know the end of it when when, when we need to climb the ladder then uh, you know it's where we require those soft skills we require those uh, you know presentation skills communication skills how we carry our, ourselves so all these become very very important and that's where uh, you know we need to suggesting that if you can learn it on your own well and good if you think that mba is a requirement uh, one must go for it lakshya i have a very uh, interesting anecdote around yeah. this i'll just yeah. share it with everyone sure. you know i have a senior who is from i am lucknow um and he shared this he went to i am lucknow on his 25th year of passing out okay 
So it's a pretty senior guy. He has been a fund manager with SBI and a couple of other funds. So he was sharing this that uh, during that session when everyone went to Lucknow and in a, on an evening they were sitting with some professors and some very senior guy because 25 years after passing out from MBA, you are at the top of the management uh, hierarchies in whichever company you are, right? So they were discussing that a professor asked that whatever we teach you at I am, you know, I am Lucknow. So uh, did that help you? How, in what ways it helped you? So uh, someone very beautifully remarked that after spending 25 years in the industry, we realized that there are three aspects which are being taught or touched upon in any curriculum. The first one is hard skills or technical skills where we, you know, so, so as you said that a CA curriculum is awesome in terms of hard skills and technical skills. The other one is soft skills, right? Uh, which also includes your networking capabilities, your relationship building capabilities and so on. And the third one is ethics, you know, your character, your moral values. So they said that, you know, when we are in college, the maximum emphasis is on the bottom, which is hard skills, technical skills, and then soft skills and very little emphasis on moral values or character building or ethics. After 25 years, we realized that the most important thing is your character, your ethics, your value system. Right. And then your soft skills, your uh, networking skills, relationship building skills, and then comes the technical skills. And especially in our world, when technical skills are changing every couple of years, mm -hmm. you pass out from CA today, probably the entire curriculum will change in two years time. And if you don't keep yourself updated, you are obsolete. Right. So we need to understand that what matters in life, mm -hmm. right. We, we, we put too much emphasis on those hard skills. So just to make, you know, this anecdote, I just got into my mind. I thought I'll share. Very, very, very important takeaway for me also personally, that uh, the, the, the way you divided it in, uh, you know, three categories was awesome. And the way the maximum emphasis is on your character building, you know, so of course, uh, in terms of knowledge, uh, you might be able to, you know, be better than someone, you might be able to excel. But if you lack a good or a strong character, I'm sure uh, one cannot reach uh, the, the pinnacle of success in life. So that yeah. was uh, way too good. Thank you. Uh, so coming down to, you know, another question. So one thing I have, you know, heard, learned from your uh, work experiences that you've been majorly inclined towards teaching and educating people, you know. So how did that come? Where did that come from? Was it naturally inside you or did it come from someone from the family or neighborhood or something like that? See, I, I love reading. Okay. And I believe that, uh, in your lifetime is too short a time to learn everything from experience, mm -hmm. right? You learn from other people's experience. And especially when a person who has done enormous work throughout his life and kind of tried and captured his entire learning in a, in a six hour or nine hour book, which is in your hands. Right. So I realized one thing that learning is done in our society in a very, um, I would say it produces clerks. It produces, uh, people who are again, emphasizing only on hard skills, the thing, which I just said earlier, uh, and this, I realized very early in my career that if you have to do anything in the society, mm -hmm. right, there is no bigger weapon than educating people, mm -hmm. right? Now this education can be primary education, higher education. It can be any, any level of education. For example, this financial market education, right? Uh, you will be surprised that highly, highly educated people like doctors, lawyers, etc., are not financially literate, I would say, right? They lack absolute understanding of how to manage the money. After working extremely hard for 50 years, 30 years, 40 years, right? They are not left with sufficient money. I have seen families where the earning member died. They used to live... A, a very luxurious life. The family member, the, the head of the family died and they don't, now the wife is actually struggling to pay EMIs, right? So point is this financial planning, financial understanding and financial markets, making good use of that, making good returns out of that, right? Is a big need of a developing nation, right? Because we have a, such a small um, penetration of financial markets in our country, that mm -hmm. wealth building cannot happen without this financial markets growing 
tremendously and everyone participating in financial markets so uh, we thought that this is a good good area to work on and mm. education the underlying education whether it was a cat prep uh, or a, a ca prep or anything or for that matter a primary school education i love everything which education has to give to the society to the country and whatever small role i can play uh, i would be happy to do that yeah that's that's awesome to know and once again uh, for everyone you know this this financial education and planning it often uh, you know is not a part of our curriculum so for example for me as well in my school i was not never taught that how to you know manage well how to budget uh, you know uh, yourself on a on a save on a pocket money or a student budget that i learned on my own on living on my own you know post school i learned about stock markets about mutual funds on my own because that was never a part of the curriculum in the initial stage and when we you know pass out school we are very intrigued by all these things we you know become all the more curious and that's where you know platforms like e learn markets uh, come into picture where we can uh, learn and that too at a reasonable price because students are always uh, you know ha- are having a budget constraint so yeah that's that's awesome to know so uh, here uh, you know i think vinith will like to know and dive deep into your uh, ventures that you are running uh, you know right now so stock edge credit academy e learn markets if you could share a bit more about uh, you know all of them and what what does your day look like uh, every day uh, managing all these three ventures uh, yeah so lakshya actually these are all have got a underlying mission around that right so we want to make the journey of a investor easy and we want to democratize financial markets right. okay with that thought we realize that there are four pillars to that or four steps to that journey the first one is learning learning about finance financial markets personal finance wealth management and so on and so forth that too not from a academic perspective our entire you know at elon markets at stockage we are not doing it from academic perspective we are doing it that if you have to invest your money if you have to trade on your own if you have to do derivatives trading and so on and so forth this is what you will need to know okay so elon markets now have around 2 and 1/2 million verified registered learners from across the country and what we have done is so that students should have easy access as you just said we give away a lot of our courses right there must be more than a million students who have got courses for no cost from us okay and that's the basic program if you want to make take a advanced certification program obviously there is a small cost attached to it but the beginner level entry level programs we try and spread it at least to students at a zero cost right second pillar to that is a tool right because you need data you need to analyze stocks there are 5000 plus stocks on nsc and bsc combined and you need data you need first hand information you need structured easy to understand noise free information on all these companies to analyze where to invest on which mutual fund to invest which stock to invest for that we created stockage okay all right so the idea was the students will need something which is very very cost effective or or free right mm. so that's why we created that but with time stockage has become bigger than elon markets in terms of the number of users it has around 3 and 1/2 million verified users who are using uh, the platform stockage right and it has enormous amount of data etc so this is the second pillar the third we believe that you know uh, when you invest you need validation from someone okay even if you have done your research analysis etc it's like you always like to ask ki bhai market kya lag raha hai reliance mein invest karu ki nahi karu ye wo this this is common right and this has been uh, passed on through generations that we invest with the advice of someone whether it's a family member or someone we consider expert what we have tried to do is the third piece which is community build a community around it so that people can get validation they can get fresh ideas they can think about you know research a collaborative in fact the third is stockage uh, so we created a platform called stockage social which is a closed community of around 7 8000 people now which is a very and it's a paid community so highly uh, quality conversations happens over there and very very moderated and where we have a team of 20 analysts who answer all the queries 
um, you know, which people can have about finance, financial markets. Idea is you learn, you analyze, you collaborate with people. And the fourth piece is transaction that you finally go ahead and transact. So within our platforms, we have built in, you can trade from there. You can invest in mutual funds through there. So, so, so that's what we are doing these four pieces. And these are part of the same uh, underlying theme, underlying idea, right? So the team mostly in most of the pieces, the team is also common, but there are certain areas where let's say, for example, research, um, the, the team of analysts, they are specific to the products. Okay. The tech team, etc. they are specific to products. And, uh, the second question you asked, um, uh, you know, how a typical day would look like there is no typical day in, uh, our entrepreneur's life, right? right? There's no typical day. There are two days are never the same because you will have different, uh, set of challenges every day, Absolutely. right. And, uh, different, uh, uh, priorities at different points of time, right. So it keeps changing and that's the fun of it, right. right. Uh, so you, you need to manage marketing sales, HR operations, mm -hmm. and uh, you have tech, you have research, you have all of those. There are awesome people who are working on that. Right. So as an entrepreneur, your most important job is to get the right team in place. Right. Absolutely. Right. And make them move in the same direction, the right direction and the same direction so that people are not working towards different goals of their own. Right. So I, I believe I'm very fortunate to have an awesome team as such. And uh, we are a Kolkata based company. And, you know, I, I always say that Kolkata has a culture, which actually is very good for entrepreneurship because people uh, will not jump around. They have a um, relationship, a culture, which will bind them together. Unlike a lot of other cities. So yeah, that's, that's how a day looks like in my life. Awesome. So, you know, uh, during this entire uh, chat, I think I had three takeaways. So one was that our learnings should, you know, come into uh, implementation also. So, you know, as we said that once you start learning, once you start analyzing, it's important that you put it into practice, you put it into, uh, you know, a transaction, then only you will be able to actually assess whether any learning took place or not, or was it right or not. Second was that entrepreneurs actually, you know, become jack of all trades, you know, managing each and every operation on your own. Of course, our team is there. But again, the responsibility and accountability comes on the leader, you know, whosoever is leading the team. And then the last point was that having a good team. So uh, we might become jack of all trades, but at the end of the day, we won't be able to, you know, uh, win the war uh, on our own. We need the entire army, uh, entire, you know, uh, set of people who can uh, walk on the same path, who can, you know, uh, walk in the same direction along with us. And that's where, uh, you know, battles are won. So that was, that was again, another set of learning. So uh, one thing I would like to understand here is that, if, say, for example, uh, we have a lot of uh, budding entrepreneurs uh, here. So once they start, uh, you know, venture out into their own startups, this might happen with a lot of us that we are not just running one uh, venture. We, we might, uh, you know, uh, just uh, run two, two or more uh, ventures parallelly. So how does one allocate resources, you know, between different categories of business? Uh, so how do we do that? See, at the onset, when you want to do something, I would strongly suggest that you do only one thing. Okay. Okay. So uh, why I'm saying that? Because the moment you catch behind two rabbits, you catch none. Yeah. So that is number one. Number two, whenever you want to do the second one, right? You have to make sure that the audience is same because the most costly effort is to bring in that audience, right? So if you have a different set of people mm -hmm. for your businesses, which you are running, right? It'll be very, very difficult, right? So if you at all want to diversify, you diversify in the same uh, similar or allied areas. Mm -hmm. okay. Initially, at least for first two, three, four years, till your business is up and running, you should focus on only one thing. In life, I think my most important learning has been focus on one thing at a time, right? And do it well. Once you have established in that, 
right? You take example of any uh, well-established business, you will realize they are known for one thing, right? You don't know Swiggy for Instamart. Yeah. It will happen after a point of time. You don't know, uh, you know, let's say Ola for Ola bikes or for Ola money. You know Ola for, you know, our specific things right now. Then the same audience can be sold Ola bikes, can be you, they can use Ola money and so on, so on and so forth. So remember this thing until unless you are established, don't get into the second thing. And once you get into the second thing, make sure it's the same audience and not a very different target audience which you are looking at. Yeah. That's again an important uh, learning for a lot of us who try to juggle between, uh, you know, a couple of things uh, all together. Because sometimes, you know, I would also share from my own experience, we, we think that the time is so less and the world is moving at such a fast speed. Uh, if I, you know, can't wait to complete my studies and then do other things, uh, I, I just think that, uh, you know, I might miss that train or I might miss those opportunities. So that's why I think we try to do a couple of things together. But again, uh, that that uh, shifts away our uh, focus to some extent or the other. You have rightly said that. So right. that- As you said, you know, moving an inch in 100 direction is of no use. Moving yeah. a mile in one direction is much, much more useful. So try to do move a mile in one direction. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So in your startups, like, have you uh, raised funds till now or are you bootstrapped since the beginning? So we were bootstrapped, but we had, um, you know, our users, some of our users who were kind of very close to us because they, they keep giving us uh, feedback and they used to love the product which you have built. So one of them was uh, Mr. Ramesh Dabani. He is a very well-known investor in Indian uh, equity markets. So he invested in us in the year 2018. Uh, India Mart founder, uh, Mr. Dinesh Agarwal, he actually invested in us being the user of the product. And there were a couple of such other names okay. from the industry. And then in, in, in the year uh, 2021, last year, uh, Kotak invested in us. So Kotak being one of the biggest names in the Indian financial uh, finance domain or financial markets or be, uh, you know, the entire, uh, so Kotak invested in us. That was a big validation for what we were doing because, right. uh, you know, they, they have very, very stringent ways of when they invest in someone. So uh, that gave us a lot of, uh, you know, moral boost up that at least what we are doing is, is very ethically, morally on high grounds, right? Because Kotak is extremely uh, particular about being ethical, being, uh, you know, due diligence heavy, and so on and so forth. So, so that was there. And uh, yeah, so those were the investment. Those are the investors in our company so far. And uh, in future, we might have more investors uh, as we grow. Yeah. So, so these investments uh, are something that uh, your, your ventures or you were seeking or they came, you know, from the investor side just because uh, they, you know, like the product or was there any need for, for the business expansion? So mostly it happened organically because, you know, these okay. people were in touch with us right and they were found they were all uh, users of the product right and we being into financial markets we are in good contacts with all the uh, people of financial markets and the companies the broking firms and so on and so forth so all most of it happened organically so uh, thank god that should we don't have to uh, go out and do that but you know there's no harm in doing that if the need be so in future we'll see what needs to be done yeah okay so, you know, uh, the next question is uh, on, a, on a deeper level. So, you know, at any stage in your uh, entrepreneurial journey, uh, did you, you ever feel that, you know, things are not working out and you shouldn't have stepped into entrepreneurship and you should have, you know, stayed in a corporate or a high paying job? See, it happened. I, I would say it happened lots and lots of time, more than, you know, we can think about. Yeah. And it will happen with everyone. Right, uh, people might just lie. It's like, oh, na, ki dar sabko lagta hai. <laughs> so, वैसे ही है. It happened it happens with everyone. Uh, see, I'll tell you something. When um, I got married in 2009, I told you, right? Uh, and the venture was not working. 2008, I had a JP Morgan job which I left. Now, when you go out and seek for another job, you don't get at, as good as your first one because you know. Um, so. So people are like, what did you do? You wasted your two years. You wasted money. You wasted this, that. 
the immense pressure gets built up because of the society family you know friends etc because they don't understand what you are trying to do plus you also realize that uh, that what you did might not be the best way best approach to do it today if someone asked me that what should i do yeah. right after the college i would say if you don't have experience why don't you gain some experience because there are such wonderful startups who are ready to give you teach you learn you, you can learn from them and then probably they'll invest in you also if they believe yeah. in you right so so what's the problem okay if you want to do it why don't you join as a co-founder somewhere because yeah. especially for chartered accountants i tell you uh because i think today's audience are chartered accountants chartered accountants make a wonderful co-founders Mm. okay because most of the startup co-founders are techies right yeah. and they'll definitely have some handicap most of them with respect to managing finances and operations and so on and so forth so they are very good at building products mm. so let them do that and you do the rest of the part because you are very good at that right yeah. you cannot build product because you don't know how to code most of you i'm i'm assuming so these complementary skill sets max makes for wonderful uh, co-founders but obviously you need to do your homework before that so as you were saying you know as as a student of chartered accountancy you feel that you are being left out and all i would say prepare sharpen your saw for that so that when the time is right you can pitch yourself as a co-founder to one of the you know people and and fortunately what has happened is co-founder has become a designation for which people seek you know i am looking for a co-founder right yeah. this was not a concept earlier you know right. either you have a co-founder you have a friend or someone with whom you will or you don't have now people seek for that right. so it's a good opportunity if you are aware of the startup ecosystem how a product works uh, the basic terminology the way a product is scaled up etc if you have done your theoretical understanding done some course done something right yeah. so whenever you are done with your c and you want to pursue that why not pitch yourself as a co-founder somewhere Absolutely. right where your learning is taken care of from someone else also it's not yeah. completely on you because yeah. at times the pressure breaks you more than anything else yeah. right so so that's what i feel uh, and and a ca is a very good co-founder i tell you yeah so this this white smile on my face is because of the validation that you just gave <laughs> that uh, ca can uh, cas can become awesome co-founders and you know uh, entrepreneurs so that's again a validation for all the participants here so i'm sure uh, all of you are here because somewhere or the other you have an underlying interest in uh, in startups and entrepreneurship or in capital markets and uh, if you were looking forward to having that validation you know we have it uh, from someone as successful as vinith uh, that yes we can um, become awesome entrepreneurs and we do not need to be restricted to taxation audit or uh, you know accounting so that's that's awesome to know so you know coming towards the next uh, you know question is uh, about the scenario which is going on uh, in in these times i would like to know your views on startups which are burning you know cash heavily burning investors money so heavily and are still not uh, you know profitable so will they be able to get cash positive or or what do you think about it <laughs> see what happens it's is any any we need to go a little deeper uh, before kind of judging them as right. good or bad right okay? absolutely we need to understand what's the difference between a business and a startup okay the underlying theme of a startup is growth for startup the most important thing is growth for a business for a traditional business most important thing is profits okay so when i say growth now people start believing growth at any cost okay earlier it was profit at any cost so at times it was morally incorrect people used to do uh, ecologically bad but again for profit they used to do that was called crony capitalism right. all right you are doing wrong things to bring in profit right. now the next level of it is to bring in growth now what is growth if you are making a profitable business probably you will take decades to create a big business Right. but if you are focusing completely on growth and you have tech as the underlying right what happens is you can grow much faster in in 3 mm -hmm. 4 5 years you have seen companies now last there, there was a company which became a unicorn in 6 months but there are companies from the day of inception within a year or so they become a unicorn so like a 7 8000 crore market cap uh, in in one year's time is never heard of in the history 
Mm. So this growth, enormous amount of growth, comes at the cost of profits, yeah. right? Because you cannot think of reaching to everyone without giving them incentives. Now, what are these incentives? These are extraordinary incentives which a person will not. You you get a cash back whatever thing you buy. So cash yeah. back was a form of incentive, discounts, right? Uh, home delivery, free uh, taking back things, and so on and so forth. Right. So without this, you cannot grow that fast mm -hmm. now the only thing is like earlier the profit motive should always be under overall you know you need to understand that you are part of a society you are part of a country right that you whatever you do you should not get into chronic capitalism right, right. your profit should have ethics you should have societal values and you should have ecological concerns all of that being met now similarly for growth you need to have those checks and balances in place right and then you grow so it should be a healthy growth it should not be right uh, that you are building a e-commerce company and you are wiping out the kirana stores and you are wiping out the msme no it cannot happen like that because you have certain you have to have certain ethics and uh, societal goals also so yes there are companies which are burning cash right and they have been given the mandate that they should burn cash right and that's what they are doing some right. of them have created enormous ecosystem which was non existent earlier right and i congratulate them for doing that right you could not have imagined uh, uh, ola or uber 10 years or 15 years down the line right you could not have imagined uh, ordering food twice a day thrice a day at at almost negligible cost so all of that has happened because there there has been innov innovation and that should continue yes the valuations and all became a little too steep and th th that's an, the part of a cycle any asset class becomes uh, very expensive when there are a lot of investors which you know chases that it happens in listed equity market also it happens with all the asset classes there are cycles and now uh, unfortunately we are at kind of a uh, downfall in terms of startup valuations Right. right, things have become moderate. So yeah, I hope I've answered your question. Yes. So so in uh, you know continuation to this question only. So you know we are seeing that uh, the valuations of startups that that are seeking uh, you know listing or are at their IPO stage are uh, you know uh, way too high. So are these justified or would you say that these are overhyped? And why there has been a declining, uh, you know, trend in the stock prices of these listed startups, which have, you know, got listed in the recent past. Uh, see, we need to understand two, three intricate points about financial markets. Yes. When a startup gets listed, right? People generally invest in that startup in the IPO of that to catch to catch on the listing gains. Correct. Because everyone believes that there is a frenzy around these startups. Everyone wants to own them and uh, uh, they will kind of pay anything when it gets listed. For example, like Gaurav is saying Zomato, right? So Zomato got listed. Everyone was thinking of owning it. So they said, even if I get some uh, shares in IPO, I'll get out on day one. I'll have some quick listing gains and I'll get out. A lot of people did that actually. A lot of people actually yeah. did that. But those who are stuck after that, now what yeah. happens is, now another point. So first point was that. It was not that people are very gungo about the business model. They don't understand. They have not looked into it. Yeah. They just want quick gains. So that's okay. That's number one. If you make quick gains, it's good. If you don't make, it's bad for you. Okay. The second one is, and, and, and at that point of time, the market was in a bull run. So what happens in a bull run, uh, any stock, you know, which gets listed most of the stocks will have a listing gain it all depends on the timing now you see there are no ipos coming okay? because the timing is bad right Correct. if you list now you will you know that day market will tank 500 points your stock will go down further so no one is listing at this point of time uh second point the listed equity space the investors have matrices like pe price to earning right but earning becomes a very very important uh, aspect and whatever parameters they have been using so far these are not applicable on the loss making startups which are now getting listed because 
I think SEBI allowed listing of loss making startups very very recently. So most of the listed equity space guys, people who are analyzing, they don't have parameters to judge these companies. See the parameters keep changing. Now you cannot because the, the, a company which is not even thinking of making profit for next three four years, you cannot judge them based on PE. Right. You need to have a different parameters like the number of users added, the MAU monthly active users, the number of orders placed, and so on and so forth. You have to uh, do that. But since we are from that traditional background wherein you know our Indian equity markets have been only allowing profit-making companies to list, and now suddenly they have started allowing this, people don't have parameters to judge mm -hmm. them. Right. That's why what happens is after listing. They'll, they'll only report losses. They don't have ways to report profits. So the more and more people see these losses, they kind of keep beating these stocks down. Right? So that's happened. what happened with Paytm. That's what happened with uh, Zomato and so on and so forth. It'll happen with most of the startups which are not profit-making. There are some startups which are profit-making. Like, you know, if they ever get listed, like Zoho, Zeroda, yeah. etc. So, you know, they, they'll do good. Uh, that's that's second point. Third point is the markets. The mm -hmm. markets overall are bad. You know, in last two, three, four months, since these startups have get, started getting listed, they have actually the markets have turned, right? And that's because of the geopolitical situation across the globe, right? And none of the stocks are performing. Most of the stocks are not performing, right? Except the last six, seven, 10 days when the markets have again taken a turn. Uh, but we are not in a bull run right now, right? In, in the short time, term. So anyways, most of the stocks are not performing. So bichare startups, ka koi alag se, you know, they'll perform and outperform others. Aisa nahi hai. They'll obviously track the markets. So these three reasons, and uh, especially the listed equity space, these are the reasons I believe. So understood. So, you know, uh, my another question got answered that if one is uh, looking forward to invest in a startup, so is fundamental analysis is a good approach, which you already answered that we should have other parameters like the number of users, the number of orders getting placed. So the startups which are not uh, profitable right now, for them, these uh, parameters would uh, will give a better judgment, will give a better analysis whether to invest or not. Yes. Plus, you also need to understand their business model. Yeah. Will they ever be able to make money? And, you know, at a unit level, if you are not making losses, then probably at some point of time, we will turn positive. But at a unit level, like let's say every order, Swiggy or Zomato is, uh, you know, delivering. If their yeah. cost of delivering is more than the money they make, then how, and, and, and the moment they increase the prices, Indian markets are so price sensitive that probably they will not, uh, you know, the volumes will go down drastically. So you need to understand these parameters that on unit economics, if they are doing very good, if they are very positive and overall they have losses because of big overheads over a period of time when they grow, they'll make money. So, but if unit economics are bad, you are giving big cashbacks, discounts. Mm -hmm. And because of that, only you are able to attract users and not because of the potency or, lit, you know, uh, the latent demand, then probably you will not make money ever. So some business models will remain questionable. Uh, so fundamentals are, yes, important. Uh, at the same time, you have to see that at a pat level, profit after tax level, if you are making losses, that's that's okay. That's still okay. But EBITDA or at a gross margin level, you have to make money. Makes sense. Makes sense. Very helpful. So, you know, we need uh, to coming towards the, you know, uh, closing of the session. I have a question that what do you think is the future of Indian CAs in the current, uh, you know, scenario and what are the most important skills that they should learn apart from the curriculum in order to become value creating and successful entrepreneurs? Uh, see, I, I believe CA is one of the most difficult exams to pass CA final exams. Right. And I congratulate people who have done that very recently. Uh, yeah. And I believe you are an extremely hardworking person. And that's one skill set, which is very undervalued. People don't, you know, say this. I believe that every, you know, uh, hard work can be talent. If mm -hmm. talent is not working hard, yeah. right? So you have talent, 
because you have cleared one of the most difficult exams. You can work hard, right? You have a deadly combination. You should try and utilize that. Mm. But you have to be a learning machine. You have mm. to understand whatever small little bit you have learned, that's only a little bit. You can't get stuck with that. Right? You can't get stuck with that. You have to continuously learn new things, new aspects in your life so that you can add value wherever you are more than your defined set of areas like you know auditing, taxation, accounting and so on. So what happens is you see in our life, we get stuck based on what we studied in our graduation, post-graduation or our professional examination. Mm -hmm. You see in our previous generation, people are, you know, what are you? I'm a chartered accountant. Throughout the life, I'm a chartered accountant. But what is chartered accountancy or what is a doctorate degree or what is a MBA degree? It's basically the two years you have spent learning something. Yeah. It essentially says, if you say I'm an MBA throughout your life, it essentially says that you stopped learning after those two years. I am saying the world has changed. These macro programs, yes, you have done them. Good for you, right? Now you have to do micro programs continuously. And I'm not talking about learning while doing things that you always have to do, right? Experiments and learning while doing things, execution. But more importantly, you have to do micro programs where you get the learning. Let me give you an example. Uh, a few years back, we implemented a business analytics, business intelligence platform on in our system. So I went to Coursera. Uh, so, you know, all of you should check out Coursera IDX if you have not checked out. You have courses from the best of the universities across the world. Most of them are free. Only when you want a certificate, you need to pay them, right? Yeah. So uh, I went there and I did a five course uh, specialization in Tableau. Tableau is a software, right? Mm -hmm. uh, data analytics software. So, you know, what I realized was, you know, I'm, I'm giving you my learning that there are such modules and you become specialist in that area. And if you start practicing that, obviously you have to implement your learning. You don't need to go to a college for that, right? And no college is actually teaching you Tableau for that matter. Right. So what I'm saying is whatever comes to your use, you need to also theoretically build a strong base for yourself. So keep doing this micro modules throughout your life. Keep learning, be a learning machine, right? Don't get stuck with your limited learning, which you have done till now. typical point Don't do that guys. Right. And if you don't do that, you have a very amazing future, trust me. So just keep learning and keep growing. Wonderful. That was a wonderful approach uh, that you just shared about uh, that we say when we say that throughout the life and we say that we are CAs. So we, we it, it technically means that yes, uske baad, we haven't done anything. Mm. So yes, that's a wonderful approach to you know have. So that's that's awesome. That was an uh, you know very insightful conversation, Vinita. I must say, uh, a lot of uh, things got cleared in my head, and I'm sure the same would have happened with uh, all our participants also. So very insightful and an interesting session, Vinita. And uh, would really like to thank you on behalf of the entire team, Chartrepreneur. Thank you so much for coming and sharing all the insights. Thank you so much, Lakshya, for having me here and. Uh you and everyone in your team, they are doing very good work. I think, uh, you know, uh, chartered accountants need such platforms and uh, uh, I congratulate you for that. And I would request all who have attended to also download Stockage because we have included a lot of learning about financial markets there as well. And it comes mostly, it comes without any cost. Right. The, the uh, entire app is a pre, you know, freemium app where most of the material is free. So I would request all of you to download that and would love to get your feedback also. And uh, that's all. Thank you so much. Stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vineet.